I uh I uh got a snap on MIG welder that it's an older transformer welder <laughs> and it uh the problem with the welder is the wire feeder I'll tell you about more about that in a second but uh the, the way they hooked the wire the, the wire the motor up in the wire feeder and the welder was they had to tap off the transformer they had it run on regular a DC motor you know a regular old DC motor with brushes in there and all that stuff and uh, the problem with the welder was the wire wouldn't you know it just wouldn't you get the cord the wrong way and it wouldn't come out right the the motor wasn't it wasn't depending on the load it varied in speed which is not good for a MIG welder. Well, it, it's a good welder. The welder's got, it's a transformer welder. I'll show you the welder thing on a second here. I got it all apart right now. It's sitting right over here. Uh, turn this camera around so you can see it. It's a snap on welder right there. You got it all tore apart and everything. You can see it. I got the side off of it. But it's a good, it's a good, I mean, it's a good transformer welder. It's got plenty of. It's like, I don't know, 30% duty cycle at 200 and some odd amps or whatever. But it's a good, strong welder. But the wire feeder in the thing is lousy. It doesn't work right. So I want to buy a different welder. But I, in the meantime, I decided I was going to fix this welder right here. So that's what got me on this situation. And I knew the problem with the, uh, the problem with the thing was the, uh, where well, they had to set it up for the, the motor to feed the, the run the wire feeder. So I took and went on eBay and bought me one of these brushless DC motors. This is a Long's, it's a BL, BLDC 8015A. And uh, I get the thing, there's no instructions with it. I contact a place in China, they sent me some kind of 7, 7Z file, which is a zip file. It showed me how to, you know, there was a, there was, I don't even know where the little thing went to right now. The potentiometer was on the board. It's laying around here someplace. A little bitty, little bitty potentiometer. I lost it. Oh well, it wasn't working right anyway, but I want to show it to you. I don't see it. Anyway, it was it was right here inside the board right here. Well, that wasn't gonna be very handy for me. I wanted to make this thing where I could, you know, put a knob, put this box inside the cover and uh, mount the motor. I took the motor off of here and I machined this piece of aluminum up right here. And this piece of aluminum right here has got two bearings inserted in there. I had to take the shaft out of it. I machined it down to eight millimeters, the same size as the motor shaft on this variable DC motor. Well, there's four screw holes right here that are going to have little tubes. Stand, this this will be cut off, and when I I got, haven't got the the adapter the uh, what do you call it? It's designed. It's, it's a little coupling, little eight millimeter to eight millimeter coupling. I haven't got it yet, but as soon as I get it, I'm gonna put this together, and then the motor's gonna be mounted on here, and uh, it's gonna it, that way whenever okay. So the motor is going to drive this thing, this variable DC motor is going to drive it. This Rhino power supply right here uh, is a great power supply. It's working great on here. I mean, I may be wrong, but this thing's working fantastic. It, it's a 24 volts, uh, 180 watt power supply. And I'll, I'll, let me bring you over here and show you a little bit more what I did here. I'm going to have to hand hold the camera to do this. Okay, there's there's the, the power supply right there. Okay, see if you can focus on that maybe and see what we got here. That's the power supply. Okay, and there's in this hook it up to 120 on this side right on, on this side right here. You plug it in 120, which is gonna tap in the welder, and then on this side over here you got your positive and negative on this side over here. Well, I didn't have to hook these two wires right here. I didn't even hook nothing up on them. It's just one positive, one negative, and I got 24 volts DC coming out of it, which is adjustable also. Those wires come around here, and they come in the on the on the DC minus and the DC plus. Then you got your three main wires: the U, the V, the W. 
for your motor the, the the yellow the the blue and the green well nobody told me this either but you got okay so your yellow wire is a w on here but it's also the, the small yellow wire goes to the hw up here that's the hall effect sensor inside of here i believe that's what it is a hall effect sensor then the v is blue and the v hv which is a hall effect sensor goes to the blue wire okay and then they then the u is green and the green down here same way hu and nu they go together then your red wire is the positive wire that feeds the motor and the blue and the black wire coming back out of here is your negative re reference wire these two ref wires well the way this thing's going to be designed i took that potentiometer out of there that little bitty piece of crap that was in there and it was working fine when I got it. It's just that I want to be able to remote mount the potentiometer. Okay, and I soldered three little wires on inside this inside this box right here. At this end right here. There's a red, a black, and a gray wire. And they come, and boy, you gotta really be careful. You can't put too much solder in them things. The one wire hooks on the top side. It's really, I don't know if you can see in there or not. I have a flashlight right here right there the black wire down inside there hooks to the top top right there in the center the trace on the board is on the top and it, and it goes off to the left right there and the other two wires are down below but boy you got to be careful you don't put too much solder because you'll you'll crisp you'll, you'll shard them out anyway that now those three wires go up here to this potentiometer right here and you can see the motor okay so I'm gonna slow it down even more this is a 5k potentiometer Okay, it's it's turned way down. Okay, now I'm gonna start turning it up a little bit. See how that, see how slow that you can adjust that thing. I want I keep turning it up, just like you want more wire speed. Okay, and it just keeps faster and faster and faster. Very 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 linear. It's a three thousand. Uh, RPM motor. So I got to mount this potentiometer to the front of my welder and put a knob on it, and then it will con then it will control this and whatever. So I get my wire speed right there is where I wanted that. Well, on on the box over here, this box comes with this black wire. This uh, this black wire right here. This one right here, I'm touching with the screwdriver. It goes over here to this enable terminal right here. So when you let when you weld long, all of a sudden you let off the trigger of your MIG, you pull that, you break that connection right there, the motor the motor stops. Okay? And if you push the push the wire back together right here, I'm gonna see if I can't I'm gonna push the wire in now. Okay, it's gonna go into the enable hole right there. It's gonna instantly turn on go at the right speed. The same speed it was going. We'll slow it down once. Okay, so we're going that fast right now. We're MIG welding. Okay, then we break, then we break this here, let off the trigger, it, it stops. You push it back in, it starts right back up. And you got, you got a super variable speed motor right here. It doesn't, it wants to go that speed no matter what kind of load's on it. This is a, I can't remember if this is a NEMA 34 or what is this motor. I'm not sure that the motor right there is a 57 BLF03 Long's brushless motor, 24 volts DC, 3,000 RPMs. I don't know if you can get that where you can see that or not. Pretty hard to focus on that. There we go. I think we got it focused on there now where you can see it. But that's what she is. But talk about it, you know, if you got a milling machine and you need a variable speed motor for a milling machine for a feed in the thing or something, it's a perfect setup. That motor's got, you know, lots of torque. It's, it's just, you know, they make them shorter and, and they make them longer. And uh, I'm not sure, like I said, what NEMA this is. I don't see a pair of something to measure with right here. Uh, let, me get a, let me get a little ruler. I don't see one around here. There's one right here. So you can get an idea what size, you know, what kind of motor I got here. I mean, the 
the motor is about it's a little bit more than two inches across two and a looks like about three sixteenths or something and this motor right here is roughly almost four inches long but they make them they make them different lengths you know the NEMA series they come in the, the face plate is the NEMA and the, and the shaft size they make them different lengths but I can't wait to try this thing out of my welder it uh it you know I'm gonna hook this the power supply right here is gonna be hooked up inside the welder it's a 220 welder so I grab one leg off it run it to the hot side right here and then hook the neutral up neutral in the ground up so when I turn the welder on this will all be energized but anywho, we'll see how it works out. I'll get that welder, i get those that shaft coupling right there right, I'm waiting on right now. And then uh, I'll make an update to the video and we'll see how it's going to work out. But yeah, pretty neat. I never played with one of these before and it was kind of like intimidating when I first got into it. But you see how I hooked the wires up on the thing. You can see, like I said, these three right here that come from the motor, the big wires. You know, they're, the like I said, the, the W right here. Goes to, and the yellow, same yellow wire out here goes to the HW up here for the Hall Effect sensor on it. And the red wire goes to the positive and the black wire goes to the negative right here. That's all there is to it. But they've got some other way you can run these things by flipping a little switch right here. And run it with an external uh, potentiometer. But it showed that it had to have five, a 5 volt source. Well I didn't want to worry about another power supply. That's why I took and unsoldered the, the wires out of the thing and I put... I brought the wires out and just hooked my original pot to that, you know, potentiometer to where this other one was at in here. But anyway, pretty cool. I'm going to play with some more of these things. These things are kind of neat. Anyway, I thought I'd share that with somebody else out there in case they're, you know, want to learn some more about brushless DC motors. That's what we got. Bye.